Hey guys, it's Charlie. I hope you're doing extremely well. Today's video is going to be my May slash June book haul, or kind of middle of May slash June book haul. But before I get on with showing you any of the books, I just wanted for us to have a little bit of a chat because um, yet again, it has been a super long time since I filmed anything. I think something like seven weeks or maybe even eight weeks now. I don't know. Definitely over six weeks, that's for sure. And um, I feel really guilty because I feel like since I came back after moving house, this has kind of become a pattern now for me. Like, um, I seem to be filming a video and then disappearing off for a stupidly long amount of time and um let's face it it isn't it isn't good enough when i should be creating content for you guys um so i kind of wanted to just let you know what was going on and uh what you can expect from my channel from like this point onwards so there's a couple of reasons why i haven't been filming the first is that i lost the charger for my camera or I thought I lost the camera for my charger. It took me weeks to realise that my camera, that I'm filming right now, which is my vlogging camera, didn't actually come with a charger. You charge it via your computer. So I've been sat here with a flat camera like, where can I buy a charger? Why can't I find my charger anywhere? And there never actually was one. Like, I know, how stupid am I? Um, so that's been flat which meant I couldn't film, obviously. Um, and the other reason, the main reason, is that I've been not in the best of places with my mental health at the moment, like my anxiety and things like that. Um, I'm kind of in this point in my life where I'm kind of panicking a bit. Um, which is ridiculous, but I'm panicking a bit because, and I like I know I shouldn't be comparing myself to other people, but like everybody I know right now is getting married, pregnant, got children, all these kinds of things, and I feel as though I'm kind of just doing, plodding along and doing the same things every day, things that I don't particularly want to be doing. I am very rarely seeing any of my friends because we're all so busy um and one of my friends is actually moving away for her master's degree and um i don't know i'm just i'm feeling a bit scared i suppose about the future and a bit lost because i don't know i feel like i should be doing more and it's it's really just making me panic and my anxiety levels have been like sky high if you follow me on instagram you already know this but for those of you that don't know because I know I did mention it a few videos ago um I was supposed to go and see Coldplay um last month and my anxiety was so bad that I couldn't make it which I'm devastated about um that's that's how bad it's been and I've just been really tired all the time uh like whenever I've had free time I've just been sleeping I've hardly been reading anything which just sucks um and I've been I just keep getting ill. I think because of just being like run down and tired and stressed, I just keep catching like every bug that's going around. Um, I've just got over a really serious um, bacterial virus thing. I've literally been on bed rest and I've had really strong medicine. And I don't want to sound like I'm moaning or like woe is me or anything like that. But I feel like it's no good for me just to come on every time I film a video and be positive and happy and I want to spread positivity, obviously, but life isn't always positive, and I feel like it's good to show that as well. Otherwise, you're just portraying something that's really unrealistic. So, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I haven't been feeling in the right place to film, and I've been feeling so guilty that I've not been filming that I've for the last like couple of weeks for sure i've been thinking about not coming back to booktube which is not going to happen <laughs> because it would just break my heart I i've told you guys before that this channel 
has changed my life in so many ways. When I first started this channel, if you look back at my first videos, you'll see how different I am now to then. I was in the worst place I've ever been in in my life and I was lonely, I was, I'd lost all my confidence and this channel has given me that back and I've, you know, I've met people now that I consider to be friends for life. I've got so many cool opportunities that have been coming my way, particularly this year. I've got so many blogger things to go to. I've got YLC at the end of this month and it's just so exciting and I don't want to lose all of that. So I'm not going to never film again. What I am going to say is right now, at this point in my life, even though I'm going to do my best to film as often as I can, I can't promise that it's going to be really regular just for now while I'm kind of just getting myself into a better place and everything being settled, I'm just gonna do my best to film as often as I can. So I hope that's okay with you guys. I mean, I know it will be, you've always been so kind to me. Um, but what I will be doing when I film is not just filming book hauls because I am more than aware that that's something else I've fallen into the trap of doing when I do film it's just book calls all the time, she says, about to do another one. But, um, and I know you guys always say, oh, I, we really enjoy your book calls, but I know that you must also get really bored and want to watch something different. So, um, I can't remember if I said this at the beginning or not, but I'm going to do, um, obviously I'm doing a book haul now, but I'm doing this so I'm up to date with all the books that I need to show you, so that I can then get on with the other videos that I have planned. So I've got lots of reviews, I've got favourites, I've got recommendations videos, I've got lots of vlogs coming up, um, I'm going to be starting a psychological thriller book club, um, which I'll talk more about in another video. I'm also going to be starting a whole nother series of videos, um, which, no, I'm not going to talk about that here. I'll do another video for that as well. Um, I've got some giveaways coming up because obviously I reached 1,000 subscribers like last year sometime and I never got around to doing a giveaway because of moving and everything. So I've got giveaways coming up and yeah, just I'm just going to bring my channel back to life a little bit. I don't know what that was, but I'm just going to bring my channel back to life a little bit and give you guys something a little bit more exciting to um, watch. But yeah, just thank you for being patient with me. I don't think in all this time I've been away, I've actually lost any subscribers, which is incredible because I know if I was subscribed to me, I don't know. I'm not sure I'd want to be waiting around for some idiot who's, <laughs> who's just seemingly not bothering. That's why I wanted to come on and explain so you know that I'm just not, 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 not bothering. You guys know what I mean. So, um, yeah, that's enough rabbiting on, I think. Gosh, I've been rabbiting for a very long time. Um, and, uh, yeah, as I said, this is my May and June book haul. I know I said I wasn't going to be doing any more book hauls in my last haul, but to be fair, most of the books I'm going to be showing you were sent to me. Um, I did buy a few because, let's be honest, I can't resist not buying anything. But I am currently saving because, as I said, YLC is at the end of this month. Um, and I want to be able to go a little bit mad there. Um, so that will actually probably be where my next book haul is. The end of July. My YL I'll do like a big YLC video because I'm going to vlog some of the day. So I'll have that footage as well. But uh, yeah, this is my May and June book haul. Let's get so on. The first two books I have to show you are the first and second book in a duology. And I'm currently reading the first one. Um, and they are Killer Instinct and Killer Within by S.E. Green. Can we just take a moment to marvel at how amazing these covers are? Seriously, I'm in love with them. So this um, duology is about a 17-year-old girl called Lane who is obsessed with serial killers and their inner workings, why they do what they do. But she also has urges herself. Um... And the way that she unleashes these urges is to become a bit of a vint vigilante. Speak properly, Charlie. Um, so she basically goes after revenge on people that have committed crimes and got away with it. Um, as I say, I'm currently reading Killer Instinct, which is the first book. I'm almost halfway through and I am just loving it. It is 
everything that I personally could want in a book. It's like gory, it's like heart heart racing, it's just so good. I, I, I'm having trouble putting it down, so I'm really excited to finish this off and get into the second one and see where Lane's story goes. The next book that I got is The Life We Bury by Alan S. Eskins. Eskins. Um, and this is another kind of, I think it's like a psychological thriller mystery. Um, and it's about a college student called Joe who is tasked with writing an assignment. And basically, he has to interview a stranger. And so. In his haste, he goes to uh, like an old people's home, I think. And he goes to interview this guy called Carl, who um, has spent 30 years in prison for rape and murder. But he's now like living out his last days in this home. I think it's actually an old people's home for offenders, I think. Um, and he like, I think he says that he's innocent. Um, and before he was convicted, he was actually a, a soldier, and Joe can't understand, like, how this soldier could commit a murder, and he decides to investigate more into it, and I think it just sounds really, really intriguing, and, uh, yeah, I've just heard really, really good things about this, so I'm very excited to get into it, and I love this cover as well, I think it's beautiful. It makes me miss winter. The next book that I got is In Too Deep by Samantha Hayes. I read Until Your Mind by Samantha Hayes. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. And I absolutely adored it. I did do a review, which I'll put the link... Ow, which I'll put the link, Ow, which I'll put the link to down below. Um, and I just... I'm like... She's one of those authors where I just need to have every single one of her books right now. And this is the newest one of hers. I'm kind of upset because it's a paperback, but it's bloody huge, and I hate these paperbacks that are massive. Um, but this is about a woman whose husband went out to buy a newspaper one day, and he didn't come back. And I think a little bit of time passes, and she then um, gets a phone call from a woman at a hotel confirming details of a booking her husband made there before he went missing. So her and her daughter go there because um, they want to find out like why he was supposed to be going there and stuff. But the people at this hotel seem to be a little bit odd. Um, and I just think it sounds really intriguing and I can't wait to read it. I just wish it was a little bit smaller. I then, um, from a charity shop, picked up I Remember You by Yursa... S no, I ain't even going to try and say that name. But that's the name. That's just not happening. And um, this was a cover by, I have to be honest, because look at this cover. It is so eerie. I love it. And this is a horror story that is partly based on a true story. And it is about a group of friends that set to work renovating an old house. Um, but it says that something wants them to leave and it's making its presence felt. Meanwhile, in a town across the fjord, a young doctor investigating the suicide of an elderly woman discovers that she was obsessed with his vanished son. When the two stories collide, the terrifying truth is uncovered. It says this horrifying novel, partly based on a true story, is the scariest novel yet from an international bestseller. So I just couldn't resist getting this. You guys know I'm a sucker for my horror. It is a little bit beaten up, but I don't care. Um, I'm very excited to read this one. Then my mum actually bought me um, More Moaning by Carl Pilkington. I spoke about Carl Pilkington before. I bloody love him. And I read um, his first uh, Moaning of Life book last year. And I loved it. I laughed so much. And because I've been feeling a little bit crappy lately, my mum wanted to get me something that would make me laugh. So she got me this. And it didn't fail to make me laugh I he's just fantastic he's just absolutely fantastic and these books are so beautiful basically he like goes around the world and sees how people deal with different things so like death life work um this one is 
more about kind of what people spend their time doing things like that health body things like that um and it's just fantastic if you want a laugh i cannot recommend picking up his books enough he's just brilliant and i love him and uh i wish i could marry him but that's not that's not talk about that then i picked up ghost road blues by jonathan maybury this is the first book in the pine deep how many books are in this i'm not sure pine it's it, i know it is a series of books and this is about this town called pine deep obviously and um actually i'm going to read you the back it's only small on this one so it says 30 years ago a blues musician called the bone man killed the devil at the crossroads only to be beaten and hung like a scarecrow in a cornfield, or so the story goes. Today, the people of Pine, <coughs> excuse me. Today, the people of Pine Deep celebrate their town's grisly past by luring tourists to the famous haunted hayride, full of chills and scares. But this year, the spookiest town in America will learn the true meaning of fear. Its residents will see the real face of evil lurking behind a mass of ordinary people. They will feel it in their hearts, in their bones, in their nightmares. Because evil never dies, it only grows stronger. So, I don't think any explanation is needed with this. You guys know that that is exactly my type of book and I can't wait to delve into this. Also, it's another one with a super cool, creepy cover. So yeah, that's that one. So, uh, the next book I have to show you, I was sent for a review from Atom, and that is My Favourite Manson Girl by Alison Aminga. And um, I don't really know too much about this. Um, it says that it's about a 15-year-old girl called Anna who moves away, runs away to Hollywood, I think, and she gets a job... Um, researching the murderous manson girls for a new film she accepts and then something happens I, honestly i don't really know too much about it but i'm quite intrigued by the whole manson thing so um i i'm excited to read a little bit more about it uh and i actually think i have another book in here somewhere that has manson something to do with manson in it i think i don't know but yeah so that's that one Um, David Fickling Books sent to me Eden Summer by Liz Flanagan, which is actually signed as well. Um, and this is a thriller. Um, it doesn't really say t too much of what it's about, if I'm honest. It doesn't really have a synopsis on it. But I think it has something to do with a girl's disappearance and her best friend trying to find her. Um, sounds really good. I think, uh, yeah, this is out now. Um, this one, oh, I don't know when this one comes out, actually. Oops. I'm not sure when this one is out, but I'll put the date down below somewhere. Um, then Hockey Books sent me two books, um, and they are Nothing Tastes As Good by Claire Hennessy. This is just the arc edition so I don't know what the finished copy will look like um and this is about a girl who dies of anorexia but then she becomes a guardian angel for another girl who is struggling with anorexia I think I've heard that this is incredible this book um so I'm excited to read it but also nervous because I've said before that I'm don't really read a lot of sad books I don't really like to but I'm intrigued enough that I definitely will pick it up so yeah that's that one and this one comes out, uh, oh, this month, actually. It comes out this month. So, yeah, that's that one. In fact, I think this is out now, actually. This is out now, this one. Um, and so is the next one, actually, that I'm going to show you, which was also sent to me from Hot Key Books, and that is With Malice by Eileen Cook. And this is another psychological thriller about a girl who um, goes to Italy on a school trip she has some kind of accident, but she has no memory of what happened. Um, again, I've heard this is really good as well. So oh, there's just so many good books out at the moment that I'm really intrigued to get into. Oh, there's just so many. I don't know where to start. So that's that one. 
Um, and then, oh, another one from Hotkey Books is Cell 7 by Kerry Drury, which is a young adult mystery thriller kind of thing. But it's also got a bit of dystopian in there as well, because basically in this world, um, when you are, when you get arrested for a crime, you are found guilty or not guilty by a public phone vote. And so you basically have seven days. Each day you change cell. So you go from cell one to cell seven. And when you get to cell seven, you find out what the public have decided for you. And if they've decided that you are not guilty, then obviously you just get to leave. If they decide you are guilty, you are killed, I think, on TV. Um, and it's about this girl who says that she's murdered someone but it seems like she might be lying i don't know again it sounds super intriguing and uh gosh i'm really excited for this one as well i've just got so many good books to read at the moment next two books were sent to me from faber and faber the first one is strange star by oh sorry strange star by emma carroll and this is some kind of retelling of I want to say Frankenstein. Oh, uh, I don't know. I think it's some kind of old-fashioned ghost story, but it, I think it has something to do with Frankenstein. Um, basically, it says on the back, I'm going to read it because it's only short. Early one summer's morning, a servant boy named Felix delivers an invitation. Tonight at the mysterious Villa Diodotti, there will be ghost stories that promise to feast, freeze the blood. As darkness falls, the guests arrive. The storytelling begins, then comes an unexpected knock at the door. Felix discovers a girl on the doorstep. She's travelled a long way to tell her tale, and now he must be warned. But be warned, hers is no ordinary ghost story. Sometimes the truth is far more terrifying. So again, sounds amazing. There's so many book, good books coming out this year. I think this one is out now or it's out at the end of this month. Again, I'll put the date somewhere. Um, and Faber and Faber also sent me The Graces by Law Eve, which literally has the best cover. This is just the art cover, by the way, but the finished cover is beautiful as well. So it says in the front, I think it's gonna have a hard time focusing on this, but it says, everyone said they were witches. I was going to make them mine. And I've heard that this is like the craft, which is one of my favourite, favourite films. And it's about a family um, called the Graces, who there are a lot of stories about, and a girl who is desperate to become a part of them. But they may be more dangerous than they seem. I'm really excited for this. It's such a beautiful arc edition. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get into this. Oh, and this one comes out... I nearly forgot to say again. This one comes out in... September so a little bit of a wait for this one but I think it'll be worth it and obviously I'll have a review up before that this book I got is the first book in another duology actually I think and that is Beware the Wild by Natalie C Parker and um it says here um there's something about the swamp in Styx, Louisiana, something different, something haunting, something alive. Everyone knows this and everyone avoids going near it. Even the Mardi Gras bead decorated fence that surrounds it keeps people away. Until one morning when Sterling Saucier's older brother, Phineas, runs into the swamp and doesn't return. A girl, instead, a girl named Lenora May climbs out in his place and all of a sudden, no one in Styx remembers Finn at all. They treat Lenora May as if she's been Sterling's sister forever. Sterling needs to figure out what the swamp's done with her beloved brother and how Lenora May is connected to his disappearance. But first, she's got to find someone who believes her. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this one. It sounds brilliant. And the second book, which is called... Um, what is the second book called... I can't remember, but the second book sounds even better. It's got like a real like ghosty element in it. So um, I've got the second one as well, which I forgot to put in this haul. But yeah, really excited for this one. Then I picked up 
The Waking Dark by Robin Wasserman, which is again a really nice cover. But again, I think my camera's going to have a hard time focusing it because it's shiny. Um, and um, this says, they called it the killing day. Twelve people dead in the space of a few hours. Five murderers, neighbours, relatives, friends. All of, them se all of them so normal. All of them seemingly harmless. All of them now dead by their own hand except one. And that one has no answers to offer the shattered town. She doesn't even know why she killed or whether she'll do it again. Something is waking in the sleepy town of Oleander, Kansas. Something dark and hungry that lives in the, f in the flat earth and the open sky, in the vengeful heart of its upstanding citizens. As the town begins its descent into blood and madness, five survivors of the killing day are the only ones who can stop Oleander from destroying itself. Jewel, the outsider at war with the world, West, the golden boy, at war with himself. Daniel, desperate for a different life. Cass, who's not sure what she deserves. Not sure she deserves a life at all. Ellie, who believes in sacrifice, who believes in fate, who believes in evil. Ellie, who always goes too far. They have nothing in common, they have nothing left to lose. And they have no way out. Which means that they have no choice but to stand and fight. To face the darkness in their town and themselves. Oh, this sounds so good too. So excited for this one as well. Oh no, that's not really focusing very well. I'm going to stop doing that now. The next book was sent to me from Harper Voyager and that is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Look at how amazing this proof is, guys. It's so beautiful. Uh, and this is a young adult high fantasy about a girl who... Um, Basically, I'm going to read you the first paragraph, and I that's kind of all I know to need to... All I need to know to want to be able to read it, it says, Destined to destroy empires, Mia Cover is only 10 years old when she is given her first lesson in death. So she's an assassin, and um, it sounds amazing. Can't wait to read it. It's a beast, though. Um, and this one comes out in August, so not too long to wait for that one. Then I picked up another horror book, which is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid, which is exactly the opposite, it's super thin, about a girl and... about a couple, um, and I think he is taking her to meet his parents for the first time or something, but she is thinking about ending their relationship, and uh, something happens, I don't know. Um, but I've heard it's, like, one of the creepiest books of this year, so I'm intrigued, very intrigued. You guys know I like to have a good scare. So that's that one. It's another good cover as well. Um, then I picked up Ink and Bone by Lisa Unger, which is about a girl... Do you know what? I think I may have showed you this book already. I can't remember. I'm going to talk about it again just in case I haven't. Um, and this is about a 20-year-old girl called Finley who has prophetic... prophetic dreams. Um... And she doesn't really understand it. Um, so she goes to see her grandmother, who is a renowned psychic. And I think... Um, I don't know. Her mother is helping out with some sort... Her grandmother is helping out with some sort of missing girl case. So Finley kind of gets dragged into that and she learns how to use her ability. So, yeah, really excited for this one as well. Again, another really lovely cover. Then I picked up a book that I have been eyeing up for a while, but I've heard really mixed things about. But I found a copy really cheap on eBay, so I decided to go for it. And that is The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, of course, J.K. Rowling. Um, I don't know too much about this other than it's about a, I think, a model that dies and the detective who is investigating it i don't know let me know your thoughts on this series because as i say i've heard mixed things but yeah that's that one and i love this edition i think this is the us edition but it's heck of a lot nicer than the uk one that's that one then i picked up another robin waserman book which is her latest release and that is girls on fire by I was going to say by Robin Westerman again, then I already said that. Um, and I think this is about 
two girls. One is like the known as like the real kind of good girl. She's got good grades, that kind of thing. And the other girl who is really bad, causes trouble in this town. And what happens when they come together and they just wreak havoc on everyone around them. So I'm really excited to read this one as well. I've heard that it's super dark. Um, so I'm going to have to be in the right frame of mind to read it. But yeah, really excited to read this one. And then the last book was sent to me from Little Brown. And it is On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher, who of course is a beautiful human being. Um, obviously she has her channel on YouTube, but she's also a very gifted actress um, and singer. And she's just wonderful. And I've been so excited to get my hands on a copy of this book. So I was so excited when it came in the mail. And um, oh, it's so stunning. Um, I'll read you the back of this because it's only short. And it's the last book I have to show. It says, um, Evie Snow is 82 when she quietly passes away in her sleep. But when Evie reaches the door of her own private heaven, she finds that she's become her 27-year-old self and the door won't open. As Eva begins the journey of a lifetime to shed her secrets and unlock the door, she learns more about life and love than she ever thought possible. And somehow, some way, she may even find her way back to her long lost love. And then it just says, Your soul is too heavy to pass through this door. Leave the weight of the world in the world from before. So I'm really excited about this one. Again, it sounds like it might be a bit sad, so I'm going to struggle. But I love Carrie and I have no doubt that it's going to be well worth the tears that are shed. So that's that. And that is my May and June book haul. Look at this, guys. Seriously, I have books everywhere. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for being patient with me. And hopefully it won't be too long before I post my next video. I'm not sure what my next video is going to be. Oh, I think it's going to be my top 10 books of the year so far because we're well over halfway through this year now, so I need to get that done. So that'll probably be my next video, um, which, yeah, hopefully won't be up in the too distant future. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all soon.